Hello, and welcome to another session of Digital Surgical Pathology, uh, slide review and sign out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, and I'm coming to you from uh, the uh, University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Our program uh, is a joint collaboration of the Digital Pathology Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy uh, and the Digital Pathology Association with uh, help and slides from PATH Presenter. Um, here, uh, of course, indicating the uh, uh, keynote uh, symbol of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences campus, a uh, famous statue of the sower scattering seeds, hoping that some things will grow and produce fruit. And that's sort of like what I'm doing, I guess. So our case today, again, comes from gynecologic pathology. It's that of a 23, excuse me, a 35-year-old woman who has developed post-coital vaginal bleeding. Um, uh, she has a biopsy and is found to have a uh, severe uh, concern for uh, squamous carcinoma. Uh, so we'll take a look at a representative slide coming from her resection specimen. As you can see, this is a very uh, exophytic type of lesion. It's got some pap papillary structures uh, emanating around it um, and somewhat intrusive into the uh, uh, underlying stroma. And then as we move up into the endocervix, we see there's a complex uh, endocervical glands here and maybe an area of concern here. So we'll go and look here first at this uh, proliferation here. Uh, we see these are nice uh, papillary uh, structures, um, and we see there's a squamous character to it. Uh, these cells have uh, mitotic figures. There's full thickness atypia, very pale or scant cytoplasm, and the nuclei are uh, quite uh, pleomorphic. There's some areas of uh, coarse nuclear chromatin, some irregular budding, and uh, prominent nucleoli and again, plenty of uh, mitotic figures. There does seem to be a degree of uh, maturation, if you will, but uh, uh, overall this uh, appearance is uh, uh, one of a, uh, an exophytic type of carcinoma. I don't see any evidence of keratin um, in this uh, sample, uh, although maybe right here we have a little bit of parakeratotic type change. <clears throat> so let's go down and look at the interface between this uh, tumor and uh, the underlying stroma. And here we see uh, an interesting uh, transition to a, a sort of a secondary type of uh, tumor here, uh, or at least a, a more uh, confluent and invasive type of pattern uh, of tumor. Here we see tumor cells and nests uh, budding the uh, vasculature that is dilated. Uh, and here this uh, tumor uh, proliferation also extends into areas uh, that uh, appear to be uh, concerning for possible invasion. Uh, here again, this process continues. Most of the boundary, however, has this very pushing margin. Um, as you see, a fairly smooth margin without any evidence of a single cell infiltration. Uh, this would be more of the growth pattern of a Verrucid, Verrucus uh, type of carcinoma. Uh, rather than the conventional infiltrative uh, pattern. Uh, the thing that makes this not uh, a verrucous carcinoma, however, is the uh, presence of a very definite uh, squamous atypia, mitotic activity uh, that is clearly uh, um, uh, neoplastic. And we can see again here nests of cells uh, that uh, appear distinct and have somewhat of an inflammatory reaction, indicating that they're probably uh, invasive. So this is a well-differentiated squamous tumor. It has an area of uh, sort of aberrant differentiation right here with clear-cut invasion and a pushing pattern of invasion over here. We'll look over here and see uh, if we've got another uh, feature here. And indeed, here we see more a conventional type of uh, desmoplastic and uh, paradoxical keratinization pattern of invasion right here. 
that is uh, clearly an invasive uh, focus. And uh, over here, uh, more of that uh, potentially with some retraction, raising concern for possible uh, vascular invasion, although I don't think that's a true vascular space. A little bit more over here. Again, we see occasional small nests of invasive tumor. So much of this tumor is exophytic, papillary type, uh, maybe high-grade CIN uh, with a condylomatous type change uh, with areas of clear-cut stromal invasion of a conventional type. Um, and then an area of uh, secondary sort of insular pattern of infiltration here uh, in the tumor. So let's look a little bit further at this case as uh, we continue to see what it has to offer and look and see what's going on here. So uh, looking at the surface here, uh, we can see that the glandular component is somewhat complex and then it just sort of seems to mingle on down towards the, uh, the uh, deeper stroma. If we look in uh, higher magnification at these cells, uh, we see that they indeed have a degree of cytologic atypia, some overlap, some um, hyperchromasia, loss of uh, normal endocervical type uh, cytoplasm. Um, and in this area here, we can see nice um, um, nuclear atypia here associated with that. Here we see mitotic activity. So this is uh, forming the appearance of an endocervical type adenocarcinoma, either in situ or uh, invasive. Uh, now, is it invasive? Uh, well, I think based on the extension and pattern of infiltration into the stroma, um, most observers would classify this as an invasive uh, adenocarcinoma. It's down here where it really doesn't belong and haphazardly arrayed around vessels in a manner like this that does not uh, in any way mimic uh, the normal pattern of uh, endocervical glands. Uh, we can see some benign glands over here at a comparable depth uh, with uh, normal cytoplasm and mucinin component. But these glands here are much more complex. So what we have is an invasive area of adenocarcinoma immediately juxtaposed an area of high-grade uh, condylomatous uh, squamous carcinoma in situ with areas of uh, clear-cut invasion of the squamous component. One of the questions that will come uh, with a lesion like this is uh, how do you classify, how do you measure invasion? Uh, because uh, that is a clear-cut uh, prognostic indicator. Um, and particularly where we have an invagination like this. Uh, is invasion measured from here to here or here? Uh, or is invasion measured from here down to here? Um, uh, and I think in general, most people would measure from an area like this down to here, uh, uh, the epithelial uh, stromal interface down to the area of invasion. Uh, making this a fairly superficially invasive lesion, at least if we measured there. Now, this other area here, which I believe also represents invasive tumor, um, could be measured from the <clears throat> surface up here down to here. So that's going to amount to several, uh, uh, greater than a millimeter, and uh, make this more than just a microinvasive tumor. Similarly, for the endocervical adenocarcinoma, uh, this is going to be your measured depth uh, down to here from the surface of this uh, tumor down into there. So as we know, uh, cervical carcinomas begin with an in situ lesion, uh, typically detected on a biopsy. Um, and here's a nice example for comparison of a high-grade CIN. Uh, involving the surface of the epithelium here, normal appearing endocervical glands. Now because squamous carcinoma and endocervical adenocarcinoma are both related to HPV, it's always prudent to make sure you've carefully looked at uh, the endocervical component to make sure that you don't have a concomitant 
endocervical adenocarcinoma arising in association with um, esquamous dysplasia or intraepithelial or invasive uh, neoplasia. So carcinoma of the cervix uh, uh, does have these two precursor lesions, uh, carcinoma in situ, uh, both of squamous and of adeno uh, versions. The HPV infection with oncogenic types is uh, the key risk factor here. Um, and both squamous and adenocarcinomas um, are uh, the uh, kind that can be detected. Adenocarcinoma does be, appear to be increasing in, some, in frequency somewhat. But unfortunately, the sad part of this story is that 90% of these cases should be preventable uh, by detection at an early stage, either as a precursor lesion or as a, uh, a not yet deeply invasive lesion. Vaccination programs obviously are showing some progress. When we look at squamous carcinomas, uh, we can classify them, um, grade them, although grading and, uh, and so forth does not particularly uh, uh, correlate very well with uh, prognosis. Here's another example, another tumor, uh, more clearly uh, keratinizing here, um, and has a desmoplastic type stroma that's clearly indicative of invasion. In addition, we have tumor juxtaposed uh, large thick-walled blood vessels that is indicative of invasion into the deeper stromal tissues. One would not expect these sorts of uh, large vessels to be present uh, immediately near the surface. And again, we see this reactive stroma around it. Um, here's the normal exocervix and another area of invasive tumor. Now, over here, we would classify this as a keratinizing squamous cell carcinoma because of the keratin formation. But these tumors can be heterogeneous, and uh, an area like this, if predominant, would be a, uh, a non-keratinizing area. Um, either as an in situ lesion extending into a glandular space or as an area of early invasion, which we apparently would seem to have here. Um, as an example of the uh, non-keratinizing types of uh, squamous carcinomas, this cancer, I think, uh, here uh, gives you a nice indication of a very small, uh, certainly entirely curable uh, squamous uh, lesion. Uh, that uh, does not have evidence of keratinization. It's a small cell, uh, non-keratinizing type of squamous carcinoma. And uh, invasion in this uh, particular case uh, is again classified by the uh, depth of a tumor extending beyond uh, the normal confines of the mucosa or adjacent glands and the degree of inflammation and reaction around it uh, corresponding fairly well to uh, evidence of invasion. Not the best slide uh, to demonstrate that particular function, but mostly presented here so that you can see uh, the contrast with a non-keratinizing uh, squamous carcinoma. So HPVs 16 and 18 are the most frequent associations, but there are other uh, oncogenic uh, types of high risk, um, 31, et cetera, large sequence of numbers there. Now, as you'll uh, perhaps notice that the vaccines does, do not always include all of those oncogenic types. They may include uh, five or six uh, of them. Uh, the most frequent ones, um, 16, 18, 31, 33, 35, maybe 51, uh, but not all of them will be included. And so our vaccine will not necessarily totally eliminate uh, carcinomas related to uh, these other oncogenic uh, HPV types. As I've mentioned, differentiation, well-differentiated moderately, has little relationship to outcome, is not a predictor of behavior. However, stage uh, is highly predictive, and so measuring accurately the amount of uh, uh, tumor uh, penetration and the extent of tumor is uh, very helpful. Uh, in predicting uh, outcome and, of course, adjusting uh, treatment uh, in terms of surgery and any follow-up radiation. Uh, immunohistochemistry, of course, would be positive for squamous markers as expected, as well as with uh, P16 uh, in virtually all cases. 
Uh, we want to make sure that we're not dealing with a neuroendocrine carcinoma or some mixture of neuroendocrine and squamous uh, carcinoma, and so uh, sometimes synaptophysin or other uh, uh, markers of neuroendocrine differentiation are helpful. Uh, certain metaplasias, immature squamous metaplasia, transitional metaplasia, or even atrophy can sometimes be mistaken for uh, uh, cervical dysplasia and invasion in some circumstances. Placental site nodule rarely has this uh, uh, cobblestone type appearance uh, that makes it look squamous. And some clear cell carcinomas uh, may also have uh, very uh, sharp cell borders mimicking uh, squamous uh, tumors, um, though those are uncommon. So our final sign-out diagnosis today is squamous cell carcinoma, non-keratinizing, um, invasive with adjacent adenocarcinoma of the endocervix, also invasive. Thank you for joining us. We hope this has been useful, and we look forward to uh, seeing you again. Please subscribe and share your comments. And uh, if this was helpful, please uh, like uh, the video, and uh, we'll try to keep producing uh, more in the coming days.